Hi, I'm Tana, and I'm going on a new fair trade adventure to find out how important the food we eat from around the world is to us. I'm Caleb, joining Tana to find out more about the impacts of climate change and unsustainable farming on our food. I discover the reasons for the food and water shortage that's affecting many people across the developing world. How it affects our future and us. And how being fair trade certified can make a difference for farmers. Since my last fair trade adventure, I think a lot more about where my food's coming from and no farmers work hard and should get paid fairly for the work they do. However, some people that produce our food are struggling to feed themselves. This has got me thinking, why is this happening and how are the farmers in these countries coping with this? What role does fair trade have to play? To find out more, I'm in Kenya where they grow my mum's favourite drink, tea. I met with Patrick, a representative of the Michi Makuru Tea Company, where they grow tea that is fair trade certified. He explained to me how they grow and process tea here. Welcome to Kenya. Welcome to Michi. Karibu sana. Thank you. This is a tea bush where we get the tea leaves, the two leaves and a band, which is taken to the factory with and crushed dried and then packed for export. So this is what you drink. It comes here from here. <laughs> yes. Many different types of food can be grown in Kenya, from rice, maize, onions, bananas, avocados, mangoes, beans. The list goes on. So why do people here not always have enough food? Tara initiated and runs the Food Climate Research Network. She explained to me that sometimes the way people farm can damage the land. This is known as unsustainable farming. Unsustainable farming is farming that can't be continued, which means that farmers will have to move to another piece of land somewhere else, or they won't be able to farm at all. Unsuitable farming can have a devastating effect, not only on the land, but on the people who are dependent on it for their livelihood. One example of unsustainable farming is when the way people farm uh, leads to desertification. That's when the crops take all the goodness out of the soil and leave nothing behind for the next lot of crops to grow. Nearly 250 million people are being affected by desertification across the developing world. This not only leads to lack of food, but also lack of water, and can lead to conflict within communities who can end up fighting over limited water supplies. Just over the hill from the tea farms, the land tells a very different story. This land is not a fair trade farm. What once was a thriving river and farmland is now a dry and barren land. I asked Elliot to explain just what has gone wrong here. So what's happened here? Has the landscape changed due to unsustainable farming? It looks so different to what I've seen at the tea farms. It used to be a, a river here. But farmers around here, as you can see, they 
clear the forests in order to plant other crops. The farmers have cleared the forest and planted crops that have caused the river to dry up completely. If the wrong crops are planted here, their roots are too weak to hold the soil and the soil will be washed away. As a result, the land is dry and crumbling away. This is not only having a negative impact on the land, but on surrounding communities. In particular, when the rains come, it can cause landslides. But it's not just the wrong crops that are causing this problem. Elliot pointed out that farmers have been planting eucalyptus trees because they're quick and easy to grow and are sold for firewood. However, these trees also drink a lot of water and have drained the water right down. Their roots are literally sucking the land dry. Surely if something is not done here, you can imagine what is going to happen uh, after some few years. It will be a, a disaster. Why would farmers sacrifice the land in this way if they knew that long term it would cause such devastation? Patrick at the Fairtrade Tea Farm explained to me how poverty sometimes leaves farmers with no choice but to farm this way. Kenya is an agricultural country and people depend on agriculture for food and money. So those people who use um, banned agricultural practices have no choice. They need the money now, not tomorrow, they need it now. So in the process, they might compromise the environment. It's crazy to think that in this fertile country, so full of potential, just over the hill, the land is falling away due to unsustainable farming. I've seen, I've realised that lack of choice and poverty has pushed people to farm in an unsuitable way for the land, which means that it ends up causing disaster and they don't realise that it's going to cause more problems for them in the future. I went to the Fairtrade offices in London to ask Mike Gidney, the Fairtrade Foundation's chief executive, what the support of Fairtrade can do to tackle this situation for countries like Kenya. Hi Mike, it's great to be here in the London offices. Can you tell me how Fairtrade help enable farmers in developing countries to farm in a more sustainable way? It's a really good question. Fairtrade is all about putting the interests of farmers first. We believe that you won't achieve sustainable agriculture unless the interests of farmers and producers, the people who produce the goods that we enjoy every day, unless their interests are put first. The big problem is that too many farmers around the world don't earn enough from their trade with the UK to be able to put food on the table for their families and to ensure that their children go to schools. Fair trade wants to change that. We think that's unfair. And the way we do it is two things. The first is that fair trade ensures that farmers get a minimum price. So when they grow their kilo of rice or their kilo of cocoa or bananas, they know the price they're going to get in the market. That helps them plan and invest. The second thing, and this is the most exciting I think, is there is a fair trade premium on top of that. An extra pot of money that the communities of farmers use to invest in improving their own lives. They build healthcare facilities, they build roads so they can get their produce to market, they build schools, and gradually over time they're improving their lives. I went to visit Leandro, a fair trade farmer who learnt about managing the trees on his land through a fair trade premium. He explained how if it wasn't for this advice, the well in his farm would now be completely dry, which would have had a devastating impact on his family, food supply 
and livelihood. I met our tea director and asked him the reason why the hell is dry. He told me it is because of eucalyptus. He advised me to uproot it. I uproot it and the oil came back. Leandro took me to the river in his farm to show me that by planting the right trees, he was able to encourage the water to come back again. When we uprooted the eucalyptus, we were advised to plant this indigenous tree to assist water table to come up. By cutting down his eucalyptus trees and replacing them with indigenous trees, Leandro was able to restore the water in his well. I wanted to know how the fair trade premium was being used to train more farmers like Leandro so that they could also benefit from expert advice on how best to farm their land. There are so many farmers and because we can't reach all the farmers, there are about uh, 7,000 farmers who can't reach all the farmers. So Mike Mikuro decided to train riverbank scouts to be trainers of trainers who take care of the streams that are close to their farms. This river wouldn't be the way it is now if it's not planted in the right trees. They, they, they are getting clean water and enough water for their farms and even for their animals. Because of the fair trade premium, these tea farmers have been able to get training on how to farm in a way that looks after their environment. So food can keep on growing year after year. This has a massive impact on the people who live in these areas. They have enough food to sell and the water supplies are improving. In our next episode, we'll be exploring the threat posed by climate change and the impact this is having on farmers across the developing world and what can be done to help farmers that are struggling with these immense challenges.